This is Pasha Pasha Kedeshim. And like always, we try to pick a in the Pasha and expound on it. This one's an easy one. This is an easy one. On the Indian of the Yahafta Lech Kamoicha, there's two men Mother Chazal. There's the Mother Chazal of Hillel, and there's the Mother Chazal of Rabbi Akiva. And what you have in front of you, the first page is Hillel, the Gemara, and the second page is the Shafra, Shafra of Tedes Kenim. And I made arrows by everything, so you could see where everything is, uh, which is Rabbi Akiva. What's the basic difference between Hillel and Rabbi Akiva? That Hillel says that Ahavis Yisrael is Kol Ateda Kula, the entirety of Teda. Mm-hmm. And then Akiva says that it's Kol Godel of Teda, a great principle in Teda. And the question becomes, what is exactly the difference between Hillel and Abi Akiva? So let's, let's do the basic thing. Let's read the Gemara. First, look where the arrow is on the left side of the page. First, the first arrow is on the left side of the page. You see where I made that arrow? Mm-hmm. So it's just two lines above where the arrow is. Shuv Maise. This is the famous story of Hillel. Right? Hillel was an He was an unbelievably humble man. Mm-hmm. It was impossible to anger Hillel. And the Gemara tells Fashid in the Of course, he had the famous story with the guy who bets Dalad May and Shuv that he can anger Hillel. And he says, I, and he, he says, I get so upset. He said, because of you, I lost form of this. And then he had the famous story with the Gaiti Tzedek, with the converts. that came to Shama and came to Hillel. So the Gemara says, Maisha Benoch Echad was an alien, a goy. Shivalos Nei Shammai, he came to Shammai. On the way, he told him, Gaireni, convert me. But, Almanas, the conversion is conditional. Shet Lamdeni Kala Teda Kula, you should teach me the whole Teda. Keshani Eimid Aleg Alachas. I stand on one leg. So the Gemara, Doch Frey Ba'amas Habinyin. Shabiyade. He kicked him out, he threw him away with Amas Habinyin. Amas Habinyin means. The, uh, the measuring stick, the ruler that he had next to him. Okay, in other words, something ridiculous. I'll teach you, I'll say something more. Foot, okay, for that, you're, you're, uh, you're a, uh, an agitator, you're looking for trouble, go fly card. Says the Gemara, Bolach Nihil, he came to Hillel, and he said to him, teach me the whole title while I stand on one leg. What did Hillel do? Gaide, he converted him. Amale, and he told him, Dalach, funny, it's upon you. Hate it. You don't want you to despise it being done to yourself. Lechav lach leisavet. Don't do it to your fellow. Zui kol teda. That's the whole teda. The idach perush. Who the rest is commentary. Shame. It's big matter. Zil gmed. Go and learn. Shehilo says the whole Yiddish type is v'yat melech kamoich. But notice, the hill doesn't say we have to lech kamoich. Zui kol teda. Kul of idach perush. He says the Allah son. He says it negatively. What you hate for yourself, hate for your fellow. There's a Tzemach Tzedek, where the Tzemach Tzedek has a, a gvalik of shot in this shlile. It's not just the last page. Tam niflo ba'etzem ha'teva. About the Indian from the Allah, he appeared a Why he says the bederach shlile. And if we'll have time, I'll, I'll tell you the nekud. But Hillel says, kolo terekul z'avshishah. Now, what's the obvious problem with Hillel's statement? You just type to be broken up into categories. One of the broadest categorizations possible in Yiddishkeit is between man and his fellow and man and God. Rashi is going to say the majority of mitzvahs are between man and his fellow. But let's say 50-50. Let's say 50% of the mitzvahs between man and God, 50% of the mitzvahs are between man and his fellow. If Hillel would say, if half of Judaism, that would work. But he says, how could the heart, what about the Lechmecha do with sharpness? Who are you doing a favor? Who are you not, who are you hurting if you, don't, if you wear sharpness? Right? It's the Nad Malakim. How is the heart of Lechmecha in Egea to miss the Malakim? That's the obvious problem with what Hillel says. What Hillel says, the whole page is, that's enough. So Rashi answers the question. What's the answer? Hashem's your friend too. Perfect. But now the Machavei includes the Einstein. Look at the Rashi. They made two arrows. Make sure you see it. This is a very famous Rashi. On the right side of the page now. The Allah Sunni. That you hate to be done to yourself. Lachav roch leitav. Don't do to your fellow. Says Rashi that the Pasuk says, Re'acha, your friend. Re'avichan, the friend of your father, Al-Tazib, do not forsake. Ze'a Kaddish Baruch. This goes on Hashem. Hashem is called your friend. 
Al Tavar al Dvara do not violate, transgress his words. Shari Alecha Sameh, you would hate. Shiaver Chaverecho al Dvarecho, you would hate if your friend didn't listen to you. This Rashi is the Pashtus Nigle. Al Pin Nigle, Yiddish guy is divided into the Chaver and the Mokim. How could he will say that Avas Yisrael is called a Kula? What does that have to do between the Mitzvah man and God? This is a Yiddish your friend also. Good question. Lishna Achrina second shot. The Chavarech attacker means your friend's mamish. Kigan Zeila Gneva stealing Neof, which is also considered Ben Adam Lachavere according to Rashi. Verev Mitzvah that says most Mitzvah Ben Adam Lachavere. So Hagar, in other words, according to the second shot of Rashi, even though not all Mitzvah Ben Adam Lachavere, most are. And if most Mitzvah Ben Adam Lachavere, Hillel says Kolatei Rekula. The second shot of Rashi seems to be a sickle doichik. It's not called Kula. It's close enough to say called Kula. The second set in Ashi, now you could say also that it's not too pshatim. It's a combination. The Aftarech Kamaycha means you should love the Abishtir and you should love the rest of your friends. And that's not called Kula. You don't have to necessarily say that these are two separate pshatim and Ashi. The combination of these two pshatim and Ashi explains why the Aftarech Kamaycha is called Kula. This is what Hillel says. So what do we know about Avas Yisrael? We know that Avas Yisrael is called Tehra Kula, and the reason is because Avas Yisrael has to do with friends, and Hashem is one of your friends. To the page. You see where I made the arrow? This is the Safra. I'll, I'll just say a quick word about who the Safra is. As you know, there are two, three orders to Tehra Bechal. There's three ways to write Tehra. All Jewish literature follows one of three patterns. Maybe there's a fourth, but three patterns. The Chumash, the Shash, and the Ramah. Medrashim follow the Chumash. Most Medrashim are, said, are, are allegorical, and are stories, and Medrashim, Pshat Lachazel, Chesed Yisrael. But there are Halachic Medrashim. The Halachic Medrashim are on Breshis and Shmeishis Mechilta, on Ban Midbar and Dvar Mishifri, and Havayikra Safra. And Safra is also called Teres Kainim. It's the same book. So this is a Safra. This is a Teres Kainim. In other words, this is not Stama Medrish. This is a Halachic Medrish. And these are words that are very familiar to. The last line on the page. V'yahavta l'reyecha k'moycha v'abi al-ki v'ayi v'zeh k'ha g'adu b'teh. You should love your fellow as you love yourself. Says Rabbi Akiva, this is a k'al g'adu b'teh. A great principle in Teres. What's Rabbi Akiva trying to say? Now remember, Rabbi Akiva knew what Hillel said. Why? because he was four generations after him. Hillel had 80 Talmidim. The youngest of Talmidi Hillel was Rabbi Yechen and Ben Zakkai. Rabbi Yechen and Ben Zakkai had many Talmidim, but amongst his most famous were Rabbi Eliezer ben Hurkinus and Rabbi Yeshua ben Hananiah. They were the leaders of Klaudi Yisrael, after Chod Baisheni, and they were the teachers of Rabbi Akiva. So Rabbi Akiva is removed from Hillel Three generations, but substantial generations, because Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Shua were the were Rabbi Yechon Zak was the youngest of his Talmud. So Akiva knew what Hillel said, and he changes. He says cloud bottle. What does cloud bottle mean? It's a Indian Chloe. It's an encompassing mitzvah. It's not stama Indian Chloe. It's cloud bottle. It's most encompassing. In Avas saw you have represented a huge piece of Yiddishkeit, but not the whole Yiddishkeit. Why not the whole Yiddish type? Because one of the shakas have to do with Avish Israel. So Rabbi Akiva, if you will, looking at it from a nickel dicker perspective, had the advantage of hindsight. He knew what Hillel said, right? He preferred not to say what Rashi says, that Avish is your friend. So he says, cloud bubble. Yeah, as Rabbi says that there's kolatera kula, there's cloud bubble, and there's cloud stam. You haven't shot cloud bubble, you don't have that in the page. From time to time you have a cloud bubble. Avon Sol is Klal Godel. In other words, the Avon Sol is half of Yiddishkeit. That's all. That Klal Godel, but later, half of Yiddishkeit is worthy of being identified as a Klal Godel. So how would he respond to a girl that says, you could be told by one foot? He wouldn't respond like Hillel would. Like Shammai. He wouldn't. Yeah, so there's a Rashi in Bab Metzir that says that Hillel was from Shammai. But it's Bab Hussein that Hillel was from Hillel. But there's a Shred in Rashi that says that Hillel was from Shammai. Where's the Chachamim in exact? 
to assume that it's the same thing is not to give credence to the precision of their choice of words. Now comes the Rambam, turn the page. We have a Hillel. Hillel says, I will self call it a Kula. We have another Akiva who says that obviously uh, all is called Gogol Bakeda. Now this creates a new problem. But a secondary problem, a different problem. Okay? And that problem is as follows. There's a rule in Minyan HaMitzvah that the Rambam himself brings. The Rambam has 14 rules of how you categorize a mitzvah, right? One of those rules are that when the Tata makes broad, sweeping, all-encompassing statements, they're not mitzvahs. When the Tata says, do my mitzvahs and guard them, that's not a mitzvah in Minyan Tariyadi. Mitzvah has to be specific, it has to be narrow. When Tata says, be a good person, it's not a mitzvah. When Tata says, give charity, it's a mitzvah. Visit the sick, honor the dead. In other words, be a good person is too encompassing. So a question arises. Is Avas Yisrael a mitzvah? Now, you have to have Avas Yisrael. But is it in Min Yin Tayag? When the many mitzvahs count, 630 mitzvahs, is the after Reich Kamecha a numeral? Or would we say that it's, a, it's half of Yiddishkeit? Like Signov, like Tirzach, like Sane, like Sachmid. All these mitzvahs are after Reich Kamecha. It would stand to reason that the after Reich Kamecha is Kal Gadol Betayr as a Bekiva says, it shouldn't be a mitzvah. It's Kal Gadol. It's a mitzvah of mitzvahs. So the there's opinions that say the Anam doesn't consider tshuva a mitzvah. And the reason is, because tshuva is not a mitzvah, it's the correction of all 365 of Edith. I can't count. It's too encompassing. There's different opinions about this. And the Rambam Paskins, the Fadish, the Avos Yisrael, is a mitzvah about this. It's one to turn to the image. How does the Rambam really deal with it? Look at the Rambam. It has to be a specific behavior. So the Rambam defines Avos Yisrael by finding things that don't count in any other mitzvah. Look inside. Mitzvah I'll call them. It's a mitzvah. It's minyan tariyag. On every person, flip it over. Le'ahe v'shkol echad, the other way, the other way, the other way. Le'ahe v'shkol echad v'echad mi Yisrael. To love every Jew. To goof it like he loves his own body. Shanehman v'yahavta v'echad kamar. He's supposed to love somebody else's body like you love your body. How can we do that? L'tichach. What does it mean? Doesn't mean don't steal. That's a separate mitzvah. It doesn't mean that don't overcharge or underpay. That's a mitzvah called a noah. It doesn't mean having two measurements. It's called minyan and mitzvah midrash. It means this. Say praise. Say good things about a person, not bad things. Concern yourself with his money. Would you concern yourself with your own money? That means to say like this. If you see somebody else's property being damaged, you see somebody else's property being damaged, the leak, and you could fix it, it's part of the myth of Ashav HaSaveda. You know Hashavah Saveda does not only mean something that's lost. It means something that's being lost. If you watch a person's property being damaged and you leave it alone, you will not let it say. Nevertheless, even though there's a mitzvah of preventing someone from having a loss, there is a difference between the extremes to which you'll go for yourself and you'll go for somebody else. In the mitzvah of Hashavah Saveda. So there's a separate mitzvah. The Yafarecha, Kamaycha, treat his property like it's yours. In other words, the Rambam is going to find things that don't belong to another mitzvah and use them as the specific definition of the behavior of Abbas Yisrael. If the Yafarecha, Kamaycha, is a particular mitzvah, he has to give it a particular definition. What am I supposed to do? We say to someone, put on film. What are you supposed to do? You take this and you do this. What am I supposed to do? Don't steal, it's a separate mitzvah. Don't lie, it's a separate mitzvah. That's included in the call of the Lech If the was halachically a clout, it wouldn't be a mitzvah. So the Rambam is paskening, notwithstanding what Rabbi Akiva says, that somehow, in addition to being a clout goggle, it's a specific mitzvah. And what are the issues? What Hill said, treat somebody else like yourself. 
The Allah son of you, you wouldn't want it to happen to you, don't do it to the other guy. There's, a step, there's an additional step in that. There is something different about being good to other people and not lying and cheating and treating them like you treat yourself. And these are the things that I'm going to give three examples. And just, this is what I said. This is the mitzvah saseh, the particular commandment of the Aphelech Kamaich, are these minutia, these fine aspects. So the Ethan just wants to put the brother over to the other Hillel, the other Hillel? It's Hillel. It's Hillel. It's clearly Hillel. Because he's, he's giving examples of Hillel's expression. Right. The Allah Sunni, don't only treat the guy nice, treat him like you want to be treated. Don't only not disrespect him. Honor his respect like you wouldn't want to be disrespected. That extra step, and the Raman finds these three examples. Say nice things about a person. There's no chiyah to say nice things about a person. You don't want to say lashon hara, but you don't to say lashon teva. That's what the Rechamecha mandated. Concern yourself with his property like it were your own. And finally, and just like the Reitzah B'chav Yatzmeh, you like to be honored, you should honor others. And then the Ramam goes on to say, If you honor yourself with the shame of a fellow, that's Eila Chelek Ramam. It's a terrible thing. Okay, I'm not sure if this is a part of the Yafel Lech Kamecha, but this is what the Ramam does. Now understand, the Rambam is Halacha. Halacha is Nigla. You can't have a colder Nigla than Halacha. And Allah is clear, cut, and dry. Everything has to have a place. The Rambam found a niche. He found a crack which was left empty in terms of the mitzvah of Machavede, and in that crack he puts it up with Echumach. What's that crack? That after all the mitzvahs the Tata says about Stokka and Bikachelim and Yechamavelim and Havayis HaMais and Eino and Zayla and it still doesn't add up to treating somebody like you want to be treated. This is not And this is the Rambam's translating Hillel's words. So we have the two opinions. We understand Hillel, Alpine Nigle. We understand why Rabbi Akiva deviates from Hillel and elects to say Klaal Godel Batera as opposed to Kola Tera Kula. Because Rabbi Akiva is disturbed. What does Abba Shisol have to do with Adam Lamakim? And we see that the Rambam A. Paskins, that Abba Shisol is not only an Indian Klali, it's also an Indian Prati. And what are the Pratim? The Pratim that are actually represented by what Hillel says. Treat another person if you want to be treated. In fact, as the word, like you mentioned, Kigufi. This is the Nigle of the Mitzvah of the Afghanistan. Now turn the page. Go to Rabbeinu Bachayim. But Rabbi Shai, let's now get to the critical question. And the critical question is, we read a hero, we read a Rabbi Akiva, and we read a Rambam, and all of us forgot the most important point of all. What is the translation of the word Biyahasa? Love. What is love? It's an emotion. It's not a behavior. The Rambam doesn't mention one word about love. He talks all about treating, doing towards. And the Rashi also. What does Rashi say? You wouldn't want to tell people things and they wouldn't listen to you. Hashem told you something, listen to him. Behavior. What happened to the love? This is the million dollar question. Doesn't matter how to. Love. And of course, everybody knows that the Chlau, in Yiddish type, we have a big dilemma with what's called Chayvah Salavavavish. We know a rule about mitzvahs. Raman teaches us 14 rules about mitzvahs. One of the rules is they have to be practical and they have to be universal. They have to be for all times, for all places, and for all people. How can I send mandate all people and all times and all places to feel? I don't feel. You finished. You tell me to put on film, I can do it. You tell me to love God, I don't love him. Look, look, I can't control my heart, I'm not a tzaddik. This is a famous question. And the Ramam answers the question, in that the mitzvah of loving God is not to love him. You can't control your heart. The mitzvah to loving God is to mehizboinen, to meditate in your mind about Hashem in a loving way. Your mind you can control. What is the mitzvah of fearing God? Not to fear Hashem in your heart. You can't control that. 
to meditate on Hashem, the Vada Mamaviyu Midei Yira, words that bring to fear. The commandment is not the emotion because you can't control your emotion. It's not fear and mitzvah. The commandment is the meditation. If you get the emotion, good. You don't get the emotion, you did your best. Mitzvah can be practical. So what's the practical mitzvah? What am I supposed to do? Love another Jew. I don't love him. Therefore, Hillel, Rashi, Rambam, say that love doesn't mean love. It means act lovingly. But is there no word in Hebrew that would represent, why did Peter couldn't find it? If Ahava doesn't mean Ahava, don't use the word Ahava. We have to Hashem love God, we have to figure out a way of explaining that it means love through meditation. If the Ahava Reecha Kamoicha does not mean love, it means be disposed, behave towards your fellow. So it should say, Vitisnaheg. Uh, whatever Hebrew words, I'm not good at Hebrew. Why does say the Ahasa? It doesn't mean it. The Ramam doesn't seem to have a problem with this. This Rashi in Shas doesn't seem to have a problem with it, right? But we have a problem with it. New question. Okay, new question. So let us review. I just want to say this so we'll have a, a, a way of remembering this discussion. We have three questions that we're asking. Question number one is how could Abbas Yisrael be called a Kula. It's only the Mahavede. Question number, and Hillel finds a way, and Abba disagrees with him. Second of all, how could Abbas Yisrael be a minion pratya, a specific mitzvah, and that Amman found a, a mitzvah for it? And thirdly, and this is of course the question that Hasidus asks, how could you command another person to love? I don't know. The Amman answers the question very positive. It doesn't mean love. It means treat. What about the Ahafta? I don't know. And the Rabbeinu B'chaya removes all doubt. What is the Rabbeinu B'chaya? Rabbeinu B'chaya is the Rishon. Rishonim don't waste time. In one word. Look at the arrow. The Tam. You see the page? The Tam. The Ahafta. The Recha. Kamaycha. Haflogger. That's what you got to know. Haflogger means exaggeration. It doesn't mean it. Why not? Push it. Kile Yikav. Olei Ha'adam. It's impossible for one human being's heart. Sheyei. V'shalei. Rekavasi. Yashnafshi. To love somebody like that. That's all. The Rabbein of Achai says the Ahapta doesn't mean Kamaycha. It's the field like a love for another person, but not Kamaycha. The Oit, in addition, Shekvar Bar Rabbi Akiva. Now pay close attention. Rabbi Akiva said, now this is, comes very important, this Rabbi Akiva, the Lama di Paskin Chayecha Kaysma Lechayecha Derech. If there's one jug of water and two people are in a desert and if they split, they're both going to die. And if one drinks it, he'll survive, you keep it to yourself. That's what Akiva's track did. So how could you say love your fellow as you love yourself? You come first, he comes second. Allah says the name of the Mitzvah Satedos Yev Chavede Bechol Inyan. In Luke Shaping Dantzi. The Avodah Kamecha means you have to love a person in all ways. Kashiyev, that's not Shayi Bechol Atayv. No person is ever satisfied with one gift. You want all the gifts you can get. You want to be smart, you want to be rich, you want to be liked, you want to be beautiful, you want to dress well, you want to every mile. The half of that Kamecha means just for yourself. You would want every good thing, one for your fellow and everything. And now you're chopping on to the Kamecha. Now, I don't know if you could say that Rabbi Rebchayef Peter Shachumish is a halacha, is a tzak din in Nigrin halacha, but it's different than the Rambam. He's agreeing with the Rambam that the half of the Reich Kamecha is not the emotion, it's the behavior. He translates the behavior. What's the behavior of Kamalcha? Not say nice things about him, worry about his like you worry about your own. It means you should want him to succeed in all areas. And he goes on to give examples. If you look at the top of the next page to save a little time, he says, first line, keep on them, she have Adam You see it? The first line, keep on them sometimes. So yeah, if Adam said you like your friend, but what are you doing? Lahativa. In certain things to his benefit. But I said he should be rich, but Labah Khokma not wise. And the Avrach means you should want to be rich and wise and handsome and have a beautiful home and a beautiful family. Kamaicha means he should be blessed in all areas. No chapchat in Kamaicha. Rambam found a niche, Father Shishlo, and the Rabbi Nabakai finds a niche, Father Shishlo. What do they have in common? That it is not an emotion. It's a behavior. 
And we're left with our question. Why does the Tater say love if it doesn't mean love? Turn the page. This is an Albad. That Albad is an interesting Peter show. I never really learned that Albad. You should see the page is clean. <laughs> but uh, the more I look at it, the more I realize that Albad brings a lot of aloha. And it's Rambam. He's quoting Shtika like Rambam. You see the Aflarech Kamaycha? I made the arrow. Is it Shalema? This means. You see the Aflarech Kamaycha? Shalema means. Say, Aveo love him like you love your own body. That's the exact words that I'm going to use. Love him like you love your own body. Ulozeh. And if you love his body like you love your own, naturally, Yifchalei, you're going to choose for him, Kifi Ayachelish, to your maximal ability, Hatevish, Hafshari Yeshulei, all the benefits of that person, the Yarchi, Jemenu, Hazekim, and you're going to distance him all damage. To Meshach, you have to do it to yourself. This is Mamish Peram Bam says. Here the Rabbah brings the Rabbah Chai also. This mitzvah, who boys is on such a level, Shulayagia, by Nezek Le'ohun. You don't have to sacrifice yourself for your love for the fellow. You come first. The same Rabbi Akiva, Chayek HaKayim. Mitvezei Sha'ava because of this love. The Shulayichuy of Lo'ad, there is no obligation on a person. La'aniyach Malachtei, to put aside his own work. Mabniyasiyas Malachtei, of Chavei, do the work for your... Fellow. Your love for self comes before your love for fellow. And he goes on to give examples. So, Raubag, like Rabbi Nubachaye, and like Rambam, define Avashisro not as an emotion but as a behavior. And then Raubag and Rabbi Nubachaye add to what Rambam says that when you come to a situation with you or the other person, you come first. Mm-hmm. So it's not Kamaycha Mamish. Or in the very, very precise words of the Rabbeinu Bechaya, Haflog. Now what does that mean, Haflog? This is Teda Shemesh. Since when does Teda speak in exaggerations? She's not a, if the Teda didn't mean love, it wouldn't say love. And this is why you have Hasidus. And the next page is the time. Now Rabbi Shal, for the regulars who come here, you know, one of the things that I love to do, based, of course, on the Rebbe Sirish, is the Rebbe always teaches us that Teir is Achas, Teir is one. But Teir is not one. There's Pshat separate, there's Emes separate, Drush separate, Halach is Drush, Shoshis and Nisha Teir, there's Sage separate. Each level in Teir has different rules. And the essence of the separation between the set of rules on the level of Pshat and the set of the rules on the level of Remesh and the set of rules on the level of, level of Drush and the set of the rules on the level of Sadi is really what is a valid question? What is considered a credible piece of analysis? For example, in Chumash, something being repeated twice It's not a question. On a higher level of Teda, it is a question. Take a look in Tanakh. Some of them are first, a lot of the Tanakh is written in allegory. And allegory frequently is redundant. Poetry. And the Mephoshim will say, Chof Dalit, Beis Shin. Chof Al Devara, Benilim Shen. Repeat the same thing in two forms. There are levels in Teda where that's an adequate comp- explanation for things. There are many issues that just don't concern Rashi. Because Rashi is an Ile Bosi, the Farish, and the Pshutish on Mikra. Rashi is Pshat. There are issues that, on the level of Pshat, are not questions. It's not that Rashi doesn't have an answer. There are non questions. The Rebbe says in the Sikhs that if Rashi had a question without an answer, he would say, Loya Daiti. There's a, there's a whole bunch of instances where Rashi says, Loya Daiti. And the Rebbe says, when Rashi says Loya Daiti, it's not the Pshat, I don't know. There isn't an answer to Pshat. And every instance in Pshut Mitra where there is a Pshat question without a Pshat answer, Rashi says Loya Daiti. So if he doesn't say Loya Daiti, either Ya Daiti, or it's not a Shaila. So how does it work? You have Pshat separate, you have Remesh separate, you have Drush separate, you have Sage separate. You have to learn them separately. But there's links between Pshat and Remesh. What is that? When you finish Pshat, you've answered every Pshat question. Remesh comes along and says, wait, I still have questions. 
And Pshat will say, hey, they're not kashas. And then we will say, they're not kashas to you, but they're kashas to me. Which is why the deeper into Tehra you go, the more exact the Tehra becomes. When I say the Tehra, I mean that the exact language of the Chumash to the letter is more precise. The deeper the Tehra you go, the more exact Tehra is. And the Rebbe Nesichas frequently will journey you through to start off with a Pshat, to ask a question and get answers. And then slug up those answers. They're not that they're not wrong. They're true on Pshat, but they're not true on Venice. And the deeper you go, the more exact things have to be. And as I've told you many, many times, when you learn my modern, most my modern, my modern begin with questions. They're not original questions. I would say 70 to 80 percent of the questions in my modern have already been asked. Some of them in the shaft. But when you learn a Pasuk, and you learn all the Mephashim on that Pasuk, and then you learn the Maimed, you know what the Maimed is doing. The Maimed is finding subtlety, nuance, in all the answers given until now, and Hasidah says, not enough. There's still a problem. And Pshat says, I hear your nuance. It's not a question on the world of Pshat. It's not a question in the world of Damesh. It's not a question in the world of Drush. And it's not a question in the world of Shad. Here's a classic example. To translate the Ahafta to treat is a problem or not? To Rambam, it's not a problem. To Rabbein Abachai, it's not a problem. To Rabbad, it's not a problem. Why? Because on their level, which is Drush, Rambam is Drush of Halacha, and Rabbad and Rabbein Abachai Pashish is Drush of Medish. It's okay to translate love as a behavior. But not a chidish. Chidish is a higher level of Tehra. The language of the Chumash has to be much more perfect. If the Ahafta means treat, it would say treat. They find a Hebrew word. And this al Alphabetta has a big problem. What's the Pshat? And of course, the question is based on the fact that it is Hepa Chamatiyas. Tehra says, Halacha says, Adam Kodav Eitzel We all love ourselves more than we love another fellow. How could we have to mean love? It's negadachus. It's, 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 it's completely an impossibility. And now the Rebbe in chapter 32 proceeds to give us away. But in order to learn chapter 32, you have to go back to chapter 31. Chapter 31, which is one of the most exciting prakim in Tanya, but it's, 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 it's one of those uh, under-celebrated prakim, tells the human being and, and I'll say it in blunt words, forgive me for my not sensitivity. Do hosta bread. You have a choice. Kezain a choshit, kezain a mishmadit. Why a choshit? What is the language of the Tanya? There's simcha sanefesh, and there's itzav in aguf. There's the joy of the soul, and there's the depression of your body. Your body is a prison. You're a spiritual being. You're a piece of a lakush, trapped in a body, in a lonely world, with a yitzhahara, with problem, with distraction. You have every right to be disappointed. Or, you can devote your life to try and emancipate the soul. How? You finish doing one mitzvah, do another. Not because you have to, but because every act of mitzvah is an act of redemption. One of my favorite lines in the whole of the Tanya. simcha do not confuse. Do not entangle. And do not confuse the joy of the soul with the depression of the body. Yeah, your body is a pain in the neck. You have the option of looking at the cup as half empty. Look at it as half full. So you can't escape your body. But you can focus on the transcending of the body. And then you'll be the simcha. If you choose to look at the burden the body gives, what do you have to do? If to be depressed, if to fast, punish the body, kill the body. Chassidus said, that's, that's not the derech of Chassidus. That's the derech of Musa. Focus on Simcha and Efesh. Focus on the joy of the soul. You can do another mitzvah, redeem your soul from your body again. I, you're still stuck in your body, but for the moment you did the mitzvah, you were transcending of it. Do nacha mitzvah, nacha mitzvah, what the Rebbe calls kol yom of the tshuva. Not just tshuva for Avedis, tshuva maishim teven. It's... You're doing tshuva not to get away from sin. You're getting tshuva to redeem yourself from the limitations of your body. 
this take on the vowel. It's very dramatic, very exciting. Now, but you can't have one without the other. You can't have each other on a goof without Simcha Sanefesh. If you don't care about your soul, you're not going to be depressed about the body. And you can't have Simcha Sanefesh without dealing with the goof. So the Alfred Ebbis speaks about pushing aside the goof. The goof is not important. The whole focus is the goof is nothing. The goof is nothing. You put the goof down, you lift the Nishama up, and you get joy from that. That's the message of Pedro Kondadala. Says the Alfred Ebbis on the basis of what we were discussing in chapter 31, that a person is always on the tightrope, a person is always um, on the pinnacle point between Simcha Sanefesh and Yitzhav and Aguf, and you have the option of pushing the Guf aside and celebrating the Simcha Sanefesh, says the Rabbi Dekir Madvaram Analis, one carries out what was discussed in chapter 31, the body is shamed and disgusting in your eyes. And you just dispose of it. It's not the priority. Your joy should be the joy of the soul alone. In other words, you're not even allowing yourself to feel bad about your body. As Shigufin said. You're just ignoring your body. I am my soul. Forget my body. How am I going to be my soul? More pain and more mitzvahs. Forget the distraction of the goof. This is a straight and easy way to come to the fulfillment of mitzvah to love your fellow and yourself and I side with the emphasis on the word love. Maybe from the greatest and the smallest. The Alter Rebbe is revisiting the question that all the Rishayim asked. How could you love somebody if you love yourself? What did the Rishayim answer? Haflaga! But Rabbi says, no. Makes the Ahasto literal. It doesn't only mean to treat, it means to feel love for somebody else exactly as you love yourself. Why? It's explains. When a person puts the body in the appropriate place, that it's nothing except a distraction. Right? What matters? Only the soul. Right? When it comes to matters of the soul, who knows? With the lost of the greatness and the level, the shots of the the root and the source of the Kim Khan living God. In other words, you're a try to hear the Russia, maybe you got a greater soul than you in the living God. Bishagam, on a higher level still moreover, Shakula Mashimish. In the Madrega of the Kim Khaim, which is Malchus, who knows? You think your soul is better than his? Maybe the other way around. In the Madrid, was called Malka Kadisha, Zada Chilus, Kula Masimus, only Shomat Ariko. And the Av, and the level of Chachma, Echad Mukulana, and the level of Chachma, not only in the Shomat, is the same, they're literally one, in all the Medicine, we're all one. So the Alfred says, when you're talking about souls, A, his soul may be better than yours, B, all souls are equal, C, all souls are one. The Mia Deg, the Lost Nolos, doesn't give Chaim as the first level, or Kim Chaim as Malchus. Bishagam to Kula Masimish is two. This goes on Malka Kadisha Zor. And the Av Echad Akulan is Chachm, which is, if it's not my own idea, it says in the Rebbe's Arif, in the, 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 the Tanya of Yiddish, I think, of the Weinberg's Tanya. So what is Av Echad Kamech? The Av Echad Kamech is, get your body out of the way. What is the reason, other than Kodavet Alatsme, what is the reason you can't love somebody else as much as you love yourself? Because your body doesn't allow it. But if the body is a non-factor, you're not loving somebody else. You're loving yourself. You can love yourself as much as you love yourself. You're a piece of me and I'm a piece of you. It's the body that doesn't allow you to love me like you love yourself. Because the goof is mechalakir. I'm just going to use those words momentarily. But in the neshama we're one. So the Rebbe says, this exercise of disregarding the body to the extent that you're not even being depressed about it. And the whole focus is on the Nishama. If you do it with an the other person is not separated from you. And the Ahasta means love, literally, and it's possible, because in the Nishama we're all one. So the Alter Rebbe begins with the Nishayim end. Not that the Alter Rebbe was a bigger Machadish than them, like a, like a, like a, like a, a Pomer would say. You know, everything is flat. Al-Tarebbe was machabes, achilles, yirishayim, didn't think of. It's a different madrega of teda. 
Why is it a Dreg of Kedah? Because what the Alter Rebbe is saying is not easy. Yeah, the Alter Rebbe says in Tanya, you could love somebody else that you love yourself by getting your body out of the way. It's a very nice philosophy. The Rebbe of Bechai says from realistic. Tanya says that Abhi Hasidus is realistic. The Rebbe Bechai is not wrong. The Rebbe Bechai is not speaking of Hasidus. He's speaking about Pidrush. And Abhi Drush is not a realistic thing to move your body out of the way. It's different levels of Tadah. And on the level of drush, it's satisfactory to transfer you have to, to treat. On the level of chashidish, it has to mean love. And that's the chiddush is out of that here in Tanya. For the chayin, you can go your soul off and mamish. That's what all Jewish people are called brothers. We can change this nashim of Hashem and because we come from one. And it's the bodies that get in the way. Put the bodies out of the side. You can love somebody else exactly as you love yourself. Because essentially you're not feeling another person. You're feeling another person is spiritually one with you. Mm-hmm. Is the others from your neshama mm-hmm. to his neshama? Well, before we were in, we were supposed to love another person's body. But it didn't mean love. It meant treat. Now it means love. Now, of course, if you love the soul, you're going to love the garment of the soul. But the focus is on the neshama. On the neshama. This is a great answer with one small problem. It's very difficult to do. Technically, it answers the question. And you see the complement of Hasidus which can be blessed. It's a new dimension. Hasidus opens up the whole world of the Neshama. What's the Kiddush of Hasidus? The Kiddush of Hasidus that you have in the Neshama, the Neshama is written about in the Gemara, it's written about in the Chum, it's written about in Kabbalah. The Kiddush of Hasidus is that the Neshama is practical. And not just the big technique of everybody. And that's what the message is. You are the soul, use it. You can love another Jew. And I mean it. That's what I'm the fact of the It's a Chiddush Nifla. It's a new revelation in Peter. That all the levels Peter before did not say it. In Chas Hashan, there's no Chashan in those levels. This is a higher level, a big Chiddush. Therefore, therefore, Ha'ish and Gufa, those who make their body the priority. But not for the sale, the soul secondary. It's impossible to love another person exactly as you love yourself. It has to be conditional. Ella, only, it has to be a conditional love. Okay, if you love your body more than you love your soul, you, you could do what the Rambam says, you could do what the Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar says, you could do what the Rambam says, you could behave towards somebody else, but you can't feel. To feel towards somebody else, you feel towards yourself. Your ikin has to be the neshama, 100%. Now he will make sense. He will say that I was self kolatayda kula. And even though we can't get into Rabbi Akiva's head, we can't do an interview, we're going to assume that Rabbi Akiva said, oh, I don't agree with you. It's not kolatayda kula, it's only kolal gadol. He says, Dr. Rebbe, you understand, it doesn't make a chat in Hillel. Hillel didn't mean yachat le'echa kamaycha, treat. Because of the Atlaya Kamecha meant treat. Rabbi Kiv is right, it's only Kwal Gadol. Hillel meant reveal the Nishama. Reveal the Nishama is not only in the game, but Adam Machalede, in the game, Adam Machalede too. When you do Krishna, you have to do it with the soul also. In other words, what is the command of the Atlaya Kamecha? In other words, what do I gotta do to the Atlaya Kamecha? Gufa in the name of the name of the Eid of Shemchasa Shemchasa Nefesh, period. And that is called the Kula. The pastors. You have to do Shabbos with your hands on your feet or with Guf and Yiv Zavim as the end of Shemchas Yivachas and Nefes Lovada. So Hillel means exactly what he says. Avas Yisrael is called the Kula, including Shatnas. What does Shatnas do with Avas Yisrael? Avas Yisrael, I'll put it to you this way. There's 613 in the truth. 612 of them you can practice without Hashidahs. There's one mitzvah that's impossible without Hasidus. So kill that one mitzvah, call it a kula. Oh, don't yeah. decide for the Rambam. No, the Rambam well, can help another yeah. pshat in Hilo Leich. The Rambam can have different pshat in Hilo. I, I, let's let, let the Rambam speak for himself. You understand? In other words, like this. If someone comes in, what's the last kid in the Rambam? You have to let him know. Shabbos, Yom Kippur, is not a kid in the Rambam. You can keep Shabbos with your hands and your feet. Even Abbas Hashem is not a rider. Because Abbas Hashem doesn't mean love God like you love yourself. Love God a little bit, also enough. 
The Atolech Hamoich is impossible without Hasidus. And when you add hero to it, Hasidus is called Eta Gula. And in case you didn't understand, he explains. Go right. The girl should cause a hill, the hill says, I'll keep a mitzvah zoo on this particular mitzvah. They will call it a kurs, the whole Judaism. The Eidah Pirush with the rest of the commentary. Key. What is the essence of Yiddishkeit? You say the shade is kola teda, the essence of the whole teda. It was like real house and episode of Guf, to bring out the Nishama. Which mitzvah says you must bring out the Nishama? Only one. Abbas is so the only mitzvah you cannot possibly do literally without the Nishama. And by saying that this is Kalatera Kula, you're saying that you have to do all the mitzvahs with the Nishama. Has to fire. It's a gavaldi kapshat. You say that? Zeu Kalatera Kula means Bakashtish. He will fest it is going. Zeu Kalatera Kula. You want to know what Judaism is? Bring out your soul. That's what he's saying to him. And bring that your soul is negating Shabbos, is negating Kosh, is negating films, is negating Shabbos, and if I say so, it's negating our soul. Just like you have a tiny pedic on the gimel, the next pedic. That the Bokha, the Bakha, the Midden, the Achas, the Memory, the Sabbath, the Nasa Yichia. Alfred Abbe says, He ilu hi mitzvah achas lavad, he amuna lavad. Alfred Abbe says, If one mitzvah amuna, it's not true, you have 630 mitzvahs, but the essence of all 600 mitzvah mitzvahs is amuna. What's amuna? And Muna is revealed in the Neshama. Chapter 33, if it's the same point in chapter 32, except that in chapter 32, revealed in the Neshama is obviously so. In chapter 33, it's a Muna. How do you reveal in the uh, Shatnas? How do you reveal your soul in Shatnas? No, 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 no. It's not enough to do Shatnas with your hand and your feet, you have to do it with your soul. How do you reveal your soul? Gufa in Nizza, the Nimas, the Enos, and Shemchas, the Shemchas, and the Shemchas, the Avoida of not just being a Kaya Mitzvah, being a good Jew, like a Ganevi. Spending every moment in the physical planet trying to run away from it. Not Chasen Shalom by hurting your goof, but by doing more Mitzvah. Doing Jewish type, so you should be connected to Hashem every second. So you're doing Shatnas. I'm not doing Shatnas to the Seven of Teda, Seven of Pishtim Yachtaf. I'm doing Shatnas because I'm running away from my goof. And that's the thing. This is in other words, what if Hasid is after Jewish type? You got to do it with your soul. Which mitzvah? The emphasis says, Al is unsatisfied without this. This is the Pshat and al in time. Now we're out of time, but I just want to tell you it like this. You have the Yom Dira Derech Mitzvah, which is very nice. And you also have the Lekut HaSich. The Lekut HaSich is a Rashi Sich. I'm not going to read it with you, I'm just going to tell you the Lekut you learn chitas, yeah? I learn chitas. What does that say? Omar Abba Kiva ze kagadu b'teva. That has two basic questions. Why is it important to say that Rabbi Akiva said it? Number one. Number two, what is Rashi telling us? Zeh kagadu b'teva. What is he telling us? Hashem says, love you, fellow yourself. Zeh kagadu b'teva. What is Rashi saying? What does that answer is? Rashi is saying, that I'll peep shot. Two questions. What is the name of the Baal Amayim? Amar Rabbi Akiva. And what, is, what, what kind of comment is that? What question is Rashi answering with those words? What's bothering Rashi? Jeff, if Rashi would keep quiet, what wouldn't you understand? What the answer is? Haflogger. It's impossible. Rashi is pshut, they shall make it. Rashi is not chafidus. You should love your fellow, you love yourself, it's impossible. Answer Rashi, Omar Rabbi Akiva. That's half the answer. Why? Rabbi Akiva said, Chayach al-Kaidmin. The same Rabbi Akiva that the Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar quoted, quoted, Chayach al you come before your friend. And it's only Klal Godel B'teda. It's not Kol Ateda Kula. It's Klal Godel. Apichidus is Kol Ateda Kula. Apichat is not Kol Ateda Kula. Because Rashi doesn't deal with emotions. He's dealing with the behavior. What Rashi is telling you with these words, Omar Rabbi Akiva, Zeh, Klal Godel B'teda is, that you have to let Kamecha means treat, not love. So it's impossible to love. You get it? Wow. Wow. So you see how the Rebbe tries to give us this concept of layers. And you should know, in the Nisnagdash world, they don't have this concept at all. The Bahag. Mm-hmm. doesn't count the Muda as a Mitzvah either. 
Fabry is not realistic, but he counts the mitzvahs qualities. You should do the mitzvahs and die them. That's the Kfei mitzvahs. How many times are you repeated in the A dozen times. There's different qualities of mitzvahs. Now, one more thing that I'll let you go. It's a machetic. I go out. It's a machetic asks a question. Why does Hillel speak negatively? Why does he say, don't do unto someone else what you don't want done to yourself? Why shouldn't he do? Do unto, yourself, unto someone else what you want done to yourself. As the Ramam does. The Ramam takes the words of Hill, twists them over. Hill says, what you hate unto yourself, don't do it to your fellow. What does Ramam say? Say nice things about people. He doesn't say, don't say bad things about people. Because that's also the righteous Muslim harder. And he has to find Iyanim that are not included in another mitzvah. Because the Ramam wants to count Allah as a specific mitzvah, right? So he twists it over. A hero says, what you don't want done to yourself, don't do it to your fellow. Translates the Rambam, what you want done to yourself, do to somebody else. Say nice things about people. Honor his money like it's your own, and honor him. So how come Hill speaks negatively? So can I tell you, he's not here, can I tell you, he's not here, he's not here, he's not He says, when people do things that are wrong, they don't know. They know. They don't care. They care. How come they don't hate themselves? Because they're able to compartmentalize. Intellectually, they did something wrong. Intellectually, they feel bad about it. But they love themselves. Now, look, funny. When it comes to yourself, you don't mind if people know that you did something wrong. You don't want to feel negative towards you. You don't want to say, ah, bum, ah, 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 you see someone do something wrong, don't feel negative energy towards that person. You know he did something wrong. In your heart you don't feel it. Just like you wouldn't want someone else to feel it about you. Okay? You could say that this is also a beauty, so I love that. The first pedicle of Kemach Tzadik is the head of the time. The second pedicle of Balabatis.